and everyone, when they come to his holiday, they say that this is interesting because here we can understand many things. I mean, the big experiment, they concentrate to one very fundamental thing, but we have more different, I say, medicine, solid state physics, atomic physics, nuclear physics, particle physics. From biomedical applications to nuclear astrophysics, using a complex infrastructure and cutting edge experiments, the men and women of Isolde push forward our understanding of the universe. This is the history of Isolde. The first type of this uh, online, I still separate the online experiment that was done was in Copenhagen. And there was a professor called Otto Crawford Hansen, he had been at CERN many times, and uh, his colleague Carl of Nielsen. And what they did was to couple together a cyclotron, uh, uh, the ion source of an isotope separator and the isotope separator in order to produce, separate and collect radioactive isotopes that was too short-lived to be made by the usual method. Isolde was the solution. Built at CERN, it enabled scientists to study more radioactive isotopes than had ever been possible. The first Isolde beams were on October 16th, 1967. The Isolde work is coming in, uh, right out of the line of the work that was started by Madame Curie, who studied the natural radioactivities. The elements of scientific interest, they are the short-lived ones, those that are very difficult to get access to. Uh, and to, make, to get them from the moment of production in the proton beam to the uh, measuring setup, that takes a while. That was done with the student running as fast as possible technique. It meant that I went into the cyclotron vault and put inside the cyclotron small metal foils, irradiated them with the 600 MeV proton beam, rapidly went in and took them out, ran to the laboratory to dissolve them in acids and make radiochemical unit operations to single out, in my case it was the element scandium, but it was a mixture of many isotopes of that element. So I brought that to a mass separator to chemically separate it into its nuclear components. That was the work that was done at that time in soil. That had its limitations because it took about an hour from end of irradiation to we could start measuring something. Now, why was this name then? Um, well, the, it is the... Um, abbreviation isotope separator online. So they decided to, to use ISOL and to make it a rather name ISOLD. And uh, there were, were actually uh, similar uh, separate connected to uh, Oak Ridge, it was called Tristan. So you have Wagner, Tristan and ISOLD. But then the last two, two letters, one joke was because at that time ISOLD was very expensive, so damned expensive for the, then the pro, uh, very proud Danes say, of course, Danish engineering, because and they were very good engineers, the Danes, so, so that's also correct. Just two years after Isolde began its work, the first paper was published with 29 authors. The idea of countries working together to further the world's scientific knowledge was growing. Collaboration was crucial. I would say that nuclear physics at the period when, when Isolde started was a field where people worked in groups of four or five people. Yeah. But suddenly, there were people from many different institutes all over Europe that uh, worked together. Not so many as now, but anyhow. And the first paper uh, that came out of Isolde had actually 29 authors. And at that time, uh, 29 was a huge amount of people. And it was endless discussions how one should put the institutes, the names, etc., for the 29 people. People put in resources into the facility. They want to have feedback to the funding agencies that we have done something. So the more, the bigger the facility grows, 
the more people you, you need to put in enough money and the more funding agencies there are and the bigger and bigger are the collaborations. So now we have these fantastic uh, CERN experiments with several thousands of, of, of people. But the first paper at Isolde still marked something different because that was when nuclear physics took the step out in the world instead of being at home to work. Yeah? And uh, I think that was, that was the, an important thing. We, the group at Isolde, was the only user and making all the, also the physics with the beams. And we discovered that the in-house group by far could not exploit uh, the bonanza of beams that we brought and uh, we made available. So we uh, very rapidly word spread around in Europe that this was the place to go if you wanted to study large series of rare radioactive nuclei and the demand became quite great to uh, get beam time at Isolde so that we clearly saw here was a uh, background to build up a larger multi-user facility. Isolde was not a typical CERN experiment. There was added something here, more users came, they brought new knowledge to us. So we were growing not like a CERN experiment that was planned, executed and so on, but like a tree. Very quickly, the Isolde collaboration grew. The physics began outgrowing the accelerator it was attached to at CERN, the synchrocyclotron. By 1972, plans were made to upgrade the SC to facilitate Isolde's growth, to provide better and more intense beams. In 1972, there was a big reconstruction of the SC machine. We got an upgrade of intensity for the external beam of factor 100, which was a huge step forward for Isolde. CERN went into particle physics, and what we were making was rather nuclear physics. So CERN had to make sure that what we did was could only be done at CERN. So we were frequently scrutinated, had crises where it was discussed, is the quality of what Isolde does such that it has should stay at CERN or should it um, be closed? To our great relief, we uh, came out strengthened each time. So in the end, we were allowed to keep the SC as single user. For Isolde, it was a big reconstruction because we needed to, uh, to change the target area. And also we, uh, what we had learned over the years, when first years, we used, so we put the target separate from the uh, separate and things like that. So we, we did really uh, uh, a major reconstruction of, of, uh, of Isolde. And then we were lucky to get Helge around to, to CERN because he's a genius in uh, the target things. So the target concept was completely remade and he, without him Isolde had not been at CERN today. For 20 years, Isolde carried on as a facility, producing great physics. But by 1990, the SC reached the end of its life cycle and plans were made to shut it down. The SC was an old-fashioned machine that wasn't digitalized, so it could not be run by computers. It had a large staff of very competent people, which, of course, were quite attractive when other projects came up at CERN where this manpower could be used. And at some moment it was quite clear that CERN had to make the saving of closing the SC. For many people at CERN we were considered something that the cat had taken in, you know. Uh, so, uh, because we were not, we were not uh, high enough physicists. But slowly that disappeared, more and more. And uh, the more the years went and the more we produced results and became uh, a and frankly speaking, very famous facility, so was proud of. And that was at the time of Carlo Rubias' directorate, and he saw the uh, potential of Isolde. Rather than closing it, it he proposed is to move the Isolde to the booster. 1991-1992 witnessed the uh, closing down of the cyclotron and the decision to move Isolde from the cyclotron to the proton synchro booster. Also at the same time, he could see that putting a post accelerator to rise the energy of the Isolde beams would rise up a new physics field, which wasn't present at the Isolde at that time. With the move, Isolde once again established itself as the leading nuclear physics facility in the world. From its very beginning until today, Isolde has overcome many obstacles by transforming itself to meet the needs of its scientists and users. 
From its background in fundamental nuclear chemistry, like that of Marie Curie, Isolde has evolved to make itself relevant in today's society, providing cutting-edge solutions to scientific questions.